Let's go ahead and put that under our heads and just lie down on our backs. Feet flat on the mat, knees to the ceiling. And just allow your belly to rise and fall for a little while. And nod chin to chest, and then raise the chin up to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Max, are you going to do Pilates? <laughs> Look at that tail going 100 yeah. miles an hour. He's been sleeping all morning. <laughs> and now he's like, wait, you're giving somebody else attention? <laughs> I didn't shut the door, did I? Wait. Lena? So, and then kind of bring the chin towards the chest, just a little chin tuck but not necessarily clear into the chest. And just nod the head side to side, moving nice and slowly, kind of massaging the back of the skull. And just notice, kind of rock back and forth or front to back. If there's an area where you feel some tension, it feels particularly good. Just feel free to camp out in an area if you need to. Or otherwise, make your um, side to side a little bigger and take your eye gaze down towards your armpit or down towards your foot as you rock the head side to side, kind of a rainbow type. And again, once it's over at the side, you can kind of lift the chin and tuck the chin in to kind of get a little massage going at each side. And then bring your head back to neutral. Rock the knees side to side a few times. Massage the sacrum and just get the hips moving a little bit. Just kind of let them swing back and forth. Max is already bored with Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes in. Nope, I'm out. <laughs> All right, and then bring the knees back into the ceiling. Bring the arms up towards the ceiling. And go ahead and engage your core. So draw the hip bones together, navel the spine, draw the ribs down and together, and just begin your puppet arms. So taking the fingertips up to the ceiling by sliding the shoulder blades along the rib cage, and then bringing them back down to the mat. Just begin to connect with your breath, make the movement go along with the breath. And just get a nice stretch with the shoulder blades. Make sure you get them way up and out and then squeeze them back down to the mat. Not necessarily together, but just down to the mat. Still keeping that head on the block. And then as you take your next exhale, take the arms overhead, keep the ribs drawn down and together. Don't let the back arch. And get a nice stretch here, shoulder blades down the back, fingertips up and overhead. Take two deep breaths here, keeping the abdominals in, keeping your scoop going or hollowing out the belly. And then inhale, hands towards the hips. Exhale, hands up and overhead. Let's just move here a couple more times, warming up the shoulders or giving them a nice stretch. It sounds like you've already worked them out a little bit this morning. Yeah. And then on your next round, take the arms up and overhead, swing them out to the sides, send them back up to the ceiling. 
Go ahead and draw your circles. Keeping those ribs down, check in, navel the spine. One more and then reverse those circles. So the hands will come down to the hips, open out and come up. You're just feeling the shoulder blades kind of glide along the rib cage. And then just bring your hands down to your sides. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs. As you exhale, just float the head up, look towards the navel. And then as you inhale, the head's gonna come down. As you exhale, the head comes up. Yeah, just keeping the shoulders down for now. Getting a little warm up into the neck. And then rock the head side to side, set it down on your block. Just massage the base of the skull out a little bit, right? In that occiput area. And then arms back up to the ceiling. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders. Look down towards your belly. Fire the upper ribs, the upper abdomen. Fire the back body so the shoulders are all, all those muscles are engaged to keep you lifted. And on your next inhale, roll back down bone by bone. Arms come up and overhead, but not the ribs. Exhale, curl it up. Think of one bone at a time. Reach the arms long with the shoulder blades down the back. Holding here. And then on your next inhale, lower back down, bone by bone. Exhale, curl it up. Reach the fingertips long, look towards the navel. Think of hollowing the belly out from left to right, using those deep abdominal muscles, the transversus abdominis. One more breath. And then on your inhale, roll it back down. Stretch the arms overhead. Stretch from fingertips to shoulder blade. We're going to exhale, curl it up. And this time, bring your hands behind your head. Send the elbows out halfway so that the back and armpits are engaged. All about the belly. As we exhale, we're going to take right armpit to left knee. Fire those obliques. Inhale, center. Keep the head lifted. Exhale, left armpit, right knee. And let's just move back and forth, inhaling back, exhaling to curl up. You can lower the head down if you need to at any time. Otherwise, we're going to keep it lifted. Keep moving armpit to knee. Looks nice. Warming up the obliques. And make sure you're really activating through the armpits, the back body. The pelvis is not moving. And come back to center. Roll it back down. Let the shoulders open out wide, but don't let the ribs flare. You get a nice stretch. And then rest your arms down at your sides. Let's check in with the pelvis, do a little pelvic tilting. So the core is gonna be engaged, the ribs knitted. Rock your low back down to the mat, tucking your pelvis. And then inhale maybe, and send the tailbone down, let the low back lift but don't let those ribs flare. And then just keep moving back and forth. Kind of getting a little massage on the back of my head with the block, hopefully you are. Bring the pelvis to neutral, hip bones and pubic bone are level with the floor without Moving the knees, just using the core hip flexors, 
float one hip down and then the other. So side to side, dropping the pelvis. And pause at each side, feel a little stretch with just the tailbone and sacrum moving. The ribs connecting with the mat. Your breath is a nice lateral breath, letting the ribs expand out and back. Rock back to that tucked position where your low back is flat on the mat and just kind of go a circle. Pretend that there's a marble in your pelvis. Your pelvis is like a bowl. Roll that marble around in a circle. Do it a couple times in one direction and then go in the other direction. And then just rock it out, shake it out, windshield wiper if you need to. Just let the hips loosen up. And then stretch the legs out long. Take the arms overhead. Find a nice stretch, but knit the ribs, fire the core. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Look down to your belly, flex the ankles. Inhale, roll it back down. Arms coming overhead. Exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Inhale, roll it back down. With this next one, we're gonna to try to come all the way up and over. So on your next exhale, curling head, neck, and shoulders. If you need to, you can kind of crawl along your outer thighs to help lift you up and over. Stretch forward, bringing your forehead over your knees, but stretch from the mid back so you're not hinging from the hips. Take a deep inhale, flex the ankles. As you exhale, roll down bone by bone. Really tuck the pelvis under. Think of bringing the low back down, then the mid back, then the upper back, head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale here, knit the ribs, fire the core. Exhale, curl it up, bone by bone, reach the fingertips, roll round the spine. Think of coming up and over a beach ball. Take a deep inhale, flex the ankles. Exhale, roll it down, one bone at a time. If you need to, kind of walk your hands down. Inhale it at the bottom, mid the ribs. Exhale, curl up one more time. Walk the hands if you need to, tuck the pelvis. Bring the shoulder blades onto the back body. Round the spine, think of the lumbar spine rounding as you have a nice spine stretch here at the top. And then just exhale forward fold, shift the sit bones back, hinge from the hips, and just stretch out the hamstrings, take a couple breaths here. And then walk the hands up, grab your block. And then we're gonna bring one knee into the chest and just roll back down, bone by bone. So check in here, bring the feet flat on the mat. And let's do a couple bridges, having that block handy. So begin to tilt the pelvis back and forth, squeeze the shoulder blades together, knit the ribs, and then begin to lift bone by bone, the pelvis and the hips, press the low back down, and then articulate up the spine to where the mid back is pressing down, the low back is lifted. All the way up toward the top of your bridge, make sure the ribs stay knitting together. Inhale, the knees long. Exhale, roll the upper back down. Tuck the pelvis, roll the mid-back down. 
then the low back, rocking all the way down to the sacrum. Inhale here to prepare, exhale, curl it up, push the low back down as the sacrum lifts. Push the mid back down as the low back lifts. And then you're pushing between the shoulder blades, the upper back down as the middle back lifts all the way up to the top. Inhale here, bring your block under your sacrum. And then we're gonna articulate down onto that block. Yeah, your blanket, whatever you've got. And then hug the knees into the chest. You can rock them back and forth and massage the sacrum if you have a block. And then lift those legs up to the sky. You can bring the heels together, send the toes out wide for your Pilates V. Think of zipping the inner thighs together, firing the glutes. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs. As you exhale, Curl the hips up off your block. Send the legs back and up. And just move with your breath. Exhaling to lift. Inhaling as you come down. You can bend at the knees if you need to. And as you lift, think of rounding the spine. You're rolling down one bone at a time. You can even challenge yourself by lowering the legs down to a 60 degree angle and then lifting them back up, floating them up and overhead, maybe even all the way up to the shoulder blades and then articulating down bone by bone. Maybe just challenging that little bit of lift off the block. So wherever you're at, let's do two more of those. Nice job. And then hug the knees in, rock them side to side. Bring one foot back down to the block and then the other. Bridge up, knit the ribs, bridge up one bone at a time. Take your block or your prop out from under the sacrum and lower back down one bone at a time. until the sacrum's back on the mat. Do a few windshield wipers here. And then check in with the neck. Nod your chin to chest a few times. Create some length in the neck now that the head is flat on the mat. We're gonna keep, send the left leg out long or keep it slightly bent, but just slide it out further from the hips. So your choice, if it's down on the mat, flex that ankle. Bring the right knee up to tabletop. Make sure the hips are level, engage through the core, knit the ribs, you can push down with the arms. Send that knee left and then right. So you're taking it across the body, and then away, but don't let the hips lift. The hips are staying right where they're at. And it's just that femur moving back and forth. Feel a nice stretch. You can even put one hand in the crease of your right hip to press that right hip down as you use the left hand to kind of bring that knee over. Feel a stretch in that outer hip. And then just do that a couple more times. Stretch it out and then let it open. Bringing that leg up to tabletop and you can keep it bent or you can send it to the ceiling, but turn it out so it's that External rotation, the toes are pointing out to the side. Keep a knit bent if you need to here. 
We're gonna sweep it across the body. Take it down, around, and up. So scribing circles, they can be tiny or big, as long as you can keep the ribs and the pelvis flat on the mat. So you're not letting that pelvis move. And do one more in that direction. And then we're gonna reverse it. So we're gonna take the leg out to the side, down, around, and up. Four more times. Nice. Good job keeping the pelvis still. And when you have your five times, hug the knee into the chest. You can give it a little squeeze, rock it back and forth. A little sacrum leveling technique is to activate that left leg, push it down into the mat, really firing the left leg while you're squeezing that right sacrum down. You may get a little pop in your sacrum or you may feel it leveling out a little bit. And then release the left leg, shake it out. And then fire that left leg again. Really press the left leg down into the mat as you hug that right knee in. Hold that squeeze. And then release. Shake both legs out. Send them out long and just let the ankles flop around. And then we're going to switch sides. So we're going to flex that right ankle. Bring the left knee up, level everything off if you need to, fire the core, knit the ribs, and we're just going to take the leg out to the side and draw it across the body. Again, keeping ribs and pelvis flat on the mat, so only that leg is moving. And it may be a big movement, it may be a really tiny movement, that's okay. As long as you're keeping that pelvis level. And then bring that left hand right into the hip crease. You can take the right arm and do a little push pull to get a good stretch through that hip. And then release, open it back out wide. And again, push down with the left hand as you pull with the right just to get a comfortable stretch in the hip. Keep that left sacrum grounded on the mat. And one more time, take the leg out to the side as far as you can without lifting the right hip. And then bring it back across, press down with your left hand to keep that hip grounded as you bring the knee across to the right. And hold that stretch for one more deep breath. Send it out, draw it back in. We're gonna take that leg up to the ceiling, keeping it as bent as you need to, externally rotate. So send the toes out to the side, but it's from the hip. Arms come down, they can push down into the mat to help you support and keep the pelvis stable as we do our circles on the left side. So left foot comes across the body, down, around, and up. Four more times. Imagine a cement block on the pelvis. Keep knitting the ribs down. And then knit the ribs, check in with the pelvis. We're gonna send the leg out to the side, down and around. So reversing those circles. We're doing five total, so do your count of five. Keeping that movement small or big, but as long as the ribs and hips don't move. And then hug that knee into the chest. You can rock it around a little bit. And then we're gonna do that same stretching exercise we did on the other side. So flex that right ankle. Really fire all the muscles in the right leg to 
push that right leg down into the mat as you squeeze the left knee in. Hold that pushing down with the right leg for a couple more seconds. And then release, relax the right leg, shake it out. And then one more time, fire the right leg, really push it down into the mat, push the right side of the sacrum down, flex through that ankle, hold for a couple more seconds. And release, shake it out. Bring the left leg down to the mat. Shake both legs out, shake the ankles out. Maybe point and flex through the ankles. And then we're gonna flex those ankles. As you inhale, send arms up and overhead. Knit the ribs down. As we exhale, we're going to curl up one bone at a time. Grabbing on to the outsides of your legs if you need to. Roll it up. Find a spine stretch here. Hinging from up and under the ribs. Pushing the lumbar spine back. And then stack the bones up one bone at a time. So now we're going to rock back on the sacrum, coming into our roll like a ball. So make sure you have nothing behind you if you want to roll. You're going to lift the legs up. You can hold in front of the knees, hold behind, either way. And then try to round the spine into that capital C. We call it a C curve. Bring the navel up and under the ribs. Send the elbows out wide. To activate the armpits, the back body. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. And keep looking down towards the belly button. Use your core, fire through your abs to rock back and forth. Those knees and legs staying right where they're at. If you want to roll back to the shoulder blades, you use an inhale to roll back and an exhale to fire you back up. So it feels good to some people, to some people it doesn't. Either way, you can really rock back and forth just on the sacrum. Nice job. And then send the legs out long, stretch down over them, just get a hamstring stretch. And then bend the knees to stack right up on the sit bones. Send the arms out, palms facing one another, straight spine, ribs knitting, core firing. Send the crown of the head up to the ceiling as you take a deep inhale. Exhale, tuck the pelvis under, find your spinal stretch. The shoulders are staying on the back. You're reaching your mid-back to the wall behind you, untuck the pelvis, back up one bone at a time, bending the knees to come into that straight spine. Exhale, tuck and round, stretch the spine. Inhale, stack it up straight from the sacrum. Exhale, tuck and round. Let's do three more or two more now. Untuck the pelvis first, bend the knees to stack the spine up straight. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, untuck, stack it back up straight. Hold the arms here, send them forward and back. Just sliding the shoulder blades along the rib cage. Nice. Send the arms up. Keep the ribs down though, keep that spine straight. Send the arms up to the ceiling and draw them back down. So it's a little bit of elevation and depression in the shoulder blades. Send the thumbs out wide, send the palms behind you. A couple more. Squeeze the elbows into your ribs. Send the arms back up straight. Keep knitting 
the ribs, keep firing the abs, keep growing tall through the crown of the head. As you squeeze those lats as the elbows come in. Hold and squeeze with the elbows in at the sides. Two more breaths. Fire the lats down below the shoulder blades. And just come down, stretch over the legs. Maybe feel a nice stretch through the shoulders. Let the shoulder blades come up. Maybe roll a little bit of the upper body side to side to feel a stretch through the shoulders. And then we're gonna hug one knee into the chest or flex through the ankles. Either way, roll it back down one bone at a time. Come down onto your back. If you have a block and you wanna use it, you can squeeze it between the pinkies. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep the arms free. So we're gonna inhale, send them overhead, knit the ribs, fire the core. We're gonna exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Bring the right knee in, palms to either side of the knee. Keeping it straight with the hip, raise that left leg up. Hover it about a foot off the floor, look towards your belly button. And switch legs, and switch. So the hands are there to kind of keep the knee in alignment with the hip. Keep looking towards the belly. Let's switch out two more times each leg. Then bend the knees there at 90. The hands are on either side of the knees. Anytime you need to rest the head, do so. But we're going to send the arms and legs out. Circle the arms around, draw the knees in. Three more times here, circling, squeezing in. And just moving with your breath. Maybe the exhale out helps. I'm doing one more for good measure. Squeeze it in, rest the head down. Rock side to side. And then we're gonna lift the left leg up to the ceiling, bring the hands up onto the leg, but keep, them, keep the shoulders down on the back. So you're looking to straighten out that knee as much as you can. And then send your right leg out long. Find a good stretch. And then we're gonna float head, neck, and shoulders up as you exhale. Hollow out the belly and switch legs, hugging one leg in, extending the other one. And keep switching. Keep hollowing out the belly. Keep trying to open up the back of the knees. Nice work. Keep the elbows bent nice and wide to keep the back firing. One more time each leg. And then send the legs up to the ceiling, externally rotate from the hip. Bring the hands behind the head for support. Exhale to lift it back up if you've lowered it. We're going to lower legs and lift them back up. So only lower as far as you can without the back arching. And three more. Nice. Hug the knees in, rock side to side. So we're moving into some of the advanced math classical series, so good work. So let's bring the hands behind the head one more time. Bring them halfway out so the armpits and back are firing. Send the right leg out long. Exhale, curl the left shoulder, yeah, right armpit to left knee, and then switch. And fire those obliques. Move with the breath, exhaling, armpit to knee, inhaling as you stretch it out. 
And when you stretch it out, you're really reaching that opposite leg long. Even outside, you can then hug the knees into the chest, lower the head down, rock the knees side to side. Good work. You can maybe lower the legs down, take a windshield wiper. And then send the feet as wide as your yoga mat and do a slow windshield wiper. So take two breaths with the knees in one direction. Take two breaths with the knees the other direction. And then take them back up to the ceiling. Hug one knee into the chest or send both arms overhead and roll your way back up. One bone at a time. We're going to be back up on the sacrum. We're going to think of capital C in the spine. As we lift those knees to tabletop, send the elbows out. Look towards your belly button or out between your knees. Think of opening the collarbones so you're kind of straightening out the upper spine, but you're rounding the lower spine, the lumbar spine towards the mat. So it's a little bit of a push pull while the belly's firing. Straighten one leg, bend it back, straighten the other, stretch through the hamstrings. You're still looking out between the knees. Nice. One more time each leg. And then see if you can lift the legs. Maybe you keep holding behind the knee, depending on how your hamstrings are feeling today. But you're gonna open up your legs as wide as your shoulders or maybe as your mat. And you're gonna lift the chest. The lumbar spine is rounding, pointing the toes here. You can hold and use the core to rock back and forth a little bit. Or if you want to try to really roll with it, it's an inhale to shoulder blades. Exhale to lift you back up. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah, I'm working on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> you can modify with holding behind the knees too. That makes the rolling a little easier. Or you can kind of bend the knees as you come up. And then as you lift, you straighten them. So goals, right? Yeah. Inhaling back, exhaling to lift, open up the collarbones, maybe one more time. Inhaling back, exhaling, lift. Proud chest and hug the knees in. Give them a little squeeze. Nice job. All right. So let's lay back down, hug one knee into the chest, then one leg long. We're gonna bend the knees, bring the hands down by the hips. And think here, squeezing the triceps into the mat, maybe squeeze the shoulder blades together. Keep the ribs knitting. We're gonna do little circles with our knees by raising one hip and then the other. So we're gonna start just kind of rocking gently back and forth, side to side. But our hands aren't out wide, so it's just a small tilt left to right. And then we're gonna circle both knees together. So firing through the core, lower the toes to the mat, take them up around to the left, to center, down and around to the right. And we're just gonna do two more circles that direction. And then coming back to center, we're gonna take the legs down and around to the left and then up onto the right. So just kind of scribing great big circles on the wall behind you with both knees together. 
And then you can check in. If you want to advance the exercise, the legs just go long instead of bent. So you can kind of just feel around with that if you want to try it once or twice in both directions. And eventually you begin to articulate the spine up to the shoulder blades while you're doing this. So hug the knees in, rock side to side. Massage the low back sacrum. And you can either roll up one bone at a time with the legs out long, or you can have one knee into the chest, roll up bone by bone to come back up sitting. Oh yeah, take a nice breath. Oh. Find a hamstring stretch if you need to, or any little bound angle type stretch. We're going to move into saw so we'll get a nice gentle spinal twist and stretch with saw. So when you're ready, we're going to send the legs out long. The ankles are going to be flexed. And you can take your legs out as wide as your mat. Nice wide feet, rocking right up on your sit bones. Bend the knees as much as you need to to have a nice straight spine. So no bend in the low back. The arms are going to come out wide to a T, palms facing forward. Inhale to engage the abs, knit the ribs. As you exhale, take the right hand to the left pinky toe. Palm flips of the left hand facing up. Find a nice stretch through the spine. Inhale, stack the spine up straight, send the arms back out wide. Knit the ribs, exhale up and over. Left hand, right pinky toe. Find a nice spine stretch, rounding through the spine, looking towards the belly. Inhale back up. Knit the ribs, exhale, dive up and over. Right hand, the left pinky toe. You can kind of chop at that left pinky toe, moving the right arm up and down, if that feels good to the shoulder. Inhale, stack the spine up straight, knit the ribs. Exhale, up and over, left hand, right foot. Keep, keep both sit bones level on the mat. Stretch your spine. On your next inhale, roll it back up, bone by bone. One more time, each side. Exhaling up and over, right hand, left pinky, chop. Inhale, stack the spine up straight. Exhale, up and over to the right foot. Chop that arm three times. Keep hugging, navel the spine. Inhale, stack the spine up straight. And send the arms back. Open up the collarbones for a little bit of a stretch through the chest. And we're going to move into our twist since we're here. So inhaling the spine nice and tall, crown of the head, knees bent. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs. Exhale, twist to the left. Keeps both sit bones grounded. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhaling, center, and just moving with your breath. Ironing out from navel through crown of the head. So just keep the shoulders grounded on the back if you can. I gotta do one more each side, it feels too good. Inhale, stack the spine up straight in the center. And then just stretch forward, find a wide-legged forward fold. You can even send the legs out wide, wider if you want to. Let the sit bones reach up and behind and just let the head hang. Shake the head, yes and no a few times. Hold the belly in and up to the spine.
Take two more deep breaths there. And then roll the spine up one bone at a time. And come down onto your belly. Press the pubic bone down into the mat. Feet can be together or out wide, wherever your low back is happy. We're gonna send the arms out to either side of the mat. Keep the neck long, gaze out maybe to where your mat meets the floor, and just raise up to your comfortable swan height. And that's just wherever it keeps your low back happy. But keep pushing the pubic bone down, keep the navel lifted, keep the ribs knitting, send the shoulder blades down the back a little further. Hold and breathe. If you want to do your swan diving, it's just a letting go with the hands, letting the legs rise up, and then you just catch yourself and repeat up to six times. So it's a lower catch. Or you can just hold, so you don't have to do the dive part. Just your kind of challenge, or if you're getting bored with just a straight swan. So lower down, think of one bone at a time so your forehead comes down to the mat. Bring the hands under the shoulders, push back, find a child's pose. Rock the hips side to side. And send the sit bones up to level out the pelvis, get a stretch. So it's just a reaching the sit bones up and behind you. And then come up to hands and knees, find a little neutral spine first before we cat cow. So belly to spine, shift the elbow creases forward, send the elbows straight back with a little bend in the elbow. And then raise between the shoulder blades up to the ceiling and release. So you're not letting the head of the shoulder really move around. You're not letting the spine move. You're keeping the sit bones separated and straight behind you. It's just a little bit of lats and rhomboids here, right between the shoulder blades, raising it to the ceiling and relaxing. Keep squeezing the elbows together. And then we'll move into some cat cow. So start with neutral spine. Relax that rhomboid press. Start with the sit bones. Lift them up to the ceiling. Drop the belly, but keep the ribs knitting. So you're not going to come into your full range of motion. The head comes up last. Start with the tailbone. Curl it under one bone at a time. Lifting up into your anger cat. And flow two more rounds, starting with the tailbone. Keep squeezing the elbows together. That way we get some more work out of the shoulders. Come back to neutral spine. And then we're gonna lower all the way down. Elbows in at the sides. And then push the pubic bone down as you come up onto your elbows. So they're right under your shoulders. Hands are spread wide, thumbs reaching towards one another. Pubic bones pushing down, ribs are drawing together. And it's like you're pushing the top of the mat away from you to really engage through the shoulders, mid back. Lift both legs, you can even float them up off the mat, fire the belly, draw the ribs in. As we exhale, we're gonna bring that right foot in, pump, pump. Send it out long, reach it long, and then left leg. And then just alternating. Keep looking out just past your hands. Keep the shoulders drawing down. Keep the navel, the spine. Lovely. One more each side. And moving with your breath at your pace. Lower the legs down, 
lower the body down as you shift the hands under the shoulders. Push back, find a quick child's pose. Or even puppy with the hips lifted. Your choice. <clears throat> And then let's come back down onto the mat. Let your right cheek come to the mat. Send your hands back into your, onto your low back, palms facing the ceiling. Fingers can be interlaced or just one hand resting on the other. And then fire your core, knit the ribs, push the pubic bone into the mat. We're gonna inhale to raise head, neck and shoulders. Lift the feet up, squeeze them into the bum. Actually, send them out long, sorry. It's like a locust pose. And then come on to your uh, left cheek this time. And this time, the heels kick in towards the bum as your head come down. Inhale to lift, knit the ribs, shoot the arms and legs up and behind you. And then rest the head down onto the right cheek. Bend the legs in. Yeah, nice, firing the legs. Send them long and lift. Exhale, lower down. And pump the legs in towards the bum. Inhaling to lift. Knit the ribs, push the pubic bone down. Lower. And bend the knees. One more time with the head alternating each time. So one more time with the head in each direction, lowering down, kicking the legs in, inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower down, kick the legs. Nice, hands under shoulders, squeeze the elbows into your sides. Push up, find a little baby swan here with the elbows in. Draw the ribs in, push the pubic bone down, push the tops of the feet into the mat, really fire the legs. Maybe lift a little higher. And then push back. Find your puppy pose. So the hips stay high. Maybe keep squeezing the elbows towards one another as the forearms stay onto the mat for a nice stretch in the shoulders. Letting the head rest down. Think of knitting the ribs and sending the sit bones up. Just for that nice push-pull stretch in the abdomen. And then push up, come back to hands and knees, keep the elbows squeezing together. Find your neutral spine first. So you're looking down between your hands. Your back is flat. And then we're gonna start from the head this time as we articulate into our cat cow. So as you inhale, lifting the head, allow the sternum to melt towards the mat, the belly, the tailbone lifts last. And then nod, chin towards chest, raise the sternum up to the ceiling. Let the pelvis tuck last. Starting from the head, coming back into your cow. Keep knitting the ribs, cat. One more time, starting from the head. One bone at a time. Nice. And just come onto your right side, align your spine. You can grab your block or your prop, whatever prop you have. Rest your head on that prop. We're gonna close out with just our upper spinal twist. So your shins are parallel with the front of your mat, the spine with the back of the mat. Arms are out straight, palms together. Engage the core, so knit the ribs, find a little lift of your right side up off the mat. We're gonna shear the left fingertips forward, 
And then it's like we're drawing a bow for a bow and arrow. The left hand draws along the right. You twist from the belly button. Don't let your left knee drift back. As you send the left hand back behind you. Bend at the elbow to send that arm forward. Just do that two more times at your pace, but really think your left knee and your left fingertips are in opposition, reaching away from one another. Find as much twist as you can with that belly staying active. And if you want to take two circles with your shoulder, you can. If you want to explore an area of good stretch, maybe one circle in each direction. And then we're just going to push up with the left hand, come onto your left side. Again, your shins are parallel with the front of your mat, the spine to the back. Make sure your shoulders and hips are stacked. And then knit the ribs, fire the belly to spine. You're floating up off the mat. Keep that right knee shifting forward as you send the right fingertips long. And then draw your bow and arrow. Oppositional stretch from right knee to right fingertips. And then if you want to draw circles, you can, or if this hurts your shoulder, you can just go down and around. Maybe one in each direction. Maybe you pause and find a good stretch. And then just using that top arm to lift you back up. Just coming seated. Take a minute to just relax through the belly. Relax through the pelvic floor. Maybe let the knees shift side to side. <clears throat> nice work today. <laughs>